Hi everyone, it was lovely to see you this morning and thank you especially to those of you who gave me some eye contact this morning when I was handing out the booklets at the front door. I really appreciate it and thank you to those of you who asked me how my day was as well. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful to be here. Um, as has already been mentioned, my name is Lacey Filipich. I'm a chemical engineer. Basically, wherever you find a raw material and you convert it into a final product, you'll find a chemical engineer. So mining's a popular place, oil and gas is a popular place, uh, beer is a popular place, uh, any kind of food, anything that is converting one thing into another, you find a chemical engineer. So it means I can work pretty much anywhere in the world and it's a wonderful career. But I'm not gonna talk to you too much about me today. I wanna talk to you a bit more about the broad scope of technology. So the idea of a 3D printer at the moment, you're used to using a 2D printer, which prints out pieces of paper. 3D prints things out in three dimensional shapes. Did you guys know that there are 3D printers in the world at the moment that you can feed, oh, let me make sure this works, seaweed and grasshoppers. You can print a steak. Yeah. How cool is that? The steak that comes out, I'm told, I haven't eaten it myself, but someone that I used to go to university with has printed one of these things at the University of Queensland over in Brisbane. And apparently you cannot tell the difference in taste. It tastes exactly like a steak. So imagine what that means for farming, for people who breed cattle. And imagine what that means for greenhouse gases. Cows are responsible for about one-sixth of the greenhouse gases that get emitted at the moment. It's huge, right? It also gets rid of that ethical debate that people say, oh, I'm a vegetarian because I don't want to hurt the animals. You don't need them anymore. M maybe you do. You've got to farm grasshoppers. But it turns out they're very easy to farm. Pretty amazing, huh? So what does a technology like that mean for the career of farming, for people who are in agriculture? You can also print a house, an entire house, in 24 hours. This is happening already. That happened last year. That's old news now. What does that mean for a builder or for someone who makes bricks? What does it mean for an architect? That's traditionally a very well-paid job. Anyone have a guess what those are? Yes, thank you very much. You are correct. Do you know what these particular pair of robot arms do? There's a hint in where they are at the moment. They cook. That's exactly right. That pair of arms costs a million bucks at the moment. Really expensive. But... The artificial intelligence that's in those arms has been watching Michelin star chefs. Now, a Michelin star chef is like the Olympic gold medalist of cooking, okay? They make the best meals in the world. These arms have been watching chefs in the kitchen and they can now copy them. What does that mean if you wanted to be a chef? Okay, that is a blockchain. That is what makes Bitcoin possible. It's been around for 26 years. It's not new, but it's famous now because Bitcoin uses it. What a blockchain does is get rid of a middle party. It allows me to send money to you, without, if you are lucky enough, without me having to go through a bank. It's a peer-to-peer -peer system. Some call it a trust machine. Because of that, bank stays are numbered. We may not have notes and coins in the future. We may only have an electronic currency. We may only have blockchains, which means you don't need bankers. And already, I think we've got 6,000 in Australia being made redundant in the next 12 months. And I can't tell you what the future is going to look like. I can't stand here and say to you, you will be able to do this job in 20 years. I don't know. No one actually knows. These technologies have only really become popular in the last few years. There could be another technological advance that turns up and turns all of this on its head. We don't know. That might have you feeling a bit like that. And that's partly because it starts when we're young. We start asking you, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's already happening to my five-year-old daughter. When we ask people what job they're going to do, it's quite scary. I'll just keep going if that's okay. Because you don't know what job's going to be there. And no one can actually categorically tell you that it is. And this focus on jobs creates a lot of stress. I would encourage you to go, just get rid of that stress completely by stopping to think about what job am I going to do? What career am I going to have? You guys should be focusing on skills. Picking up the skills have got the, that have got the best chance of giving you a job in the future no matter what jobs are out there. And fortunately, we know a lot more about what skills we're going to need than about what roles are going to be out there. 
I'll just tell you a little bit about those first four at the bottom and why they are going to be important. The first one, that really popular one at the end there, is critical thinking. When I went through school, knowledge was king. If I could remember things, I would ace exams. Now there's Google and Alexa. I don't have to remember things. Now I need to be able to decide whether the information I'm getting from Google and Alexa is relevant. Is it real? Is it from a good source? Is it applicable to the situation I'm in? That is critical thinking. Okay? It's not about being able to find the information anymore. It's about being able to assess whether that information is useful to you. The second one shocks a lot of people because we all watch YouTube, right? Or TED Talks. Does anyone watch TED Talks here? Yep, good, excellent. Um, written communication is the next one. Now, why would that be? Well, written communication is still the predominant form of communication on the net, even with all the videos. People want to read. Even if it's just sending a one-line email to a prospective employer, you need to be able to write. You need to be able to write persuasively. The next one, oh, sorry, is learning. Now, that might be a bit of a shock to you guys because you think, hey, I'm in school, I'm doing my learning. When I get out and go into my career, I'm done, right? I don't have to learn anymore. Not going to happen. We're going to have fewer managers. We're going to have flatter structures. And the result of that is, as an employee, you're going to have to learn how to do things yourself. You're not going to have bosses telling you what to do and supervising you and making sure you do it right, which is kind of what it's like at school, right? It's not going to be like that in work. You're going to have to be able to learn yourself. You're going to have to be able to go, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'll find out, and then I'll test. So pretty interesting that that's the third most popular skill. The fourth one there is my personal favourite, and it's problem solving. If any of you indicated that you were interested in starting your own business, this is the skill for you. The ability to spot a problem and to solve it is absolutely essential. And it really is in all parts of your life anyway. But if you want to start a business and be an entrepreneur, you will need that skill like nothing else. And I can certainly say that I believe STEM is future-proofing you. It is your best chance of gaining those skills. And that's from my personal experience working in engineering, then in financial education, and now as an entrepreneur. Those skills are transportable to any career you choose. Even if you choose something that's completely different, you want to be an artist, the skills that you pick up in STEM, that ability to problem solve, that ability to have critical reasoning, and to write communicatively and uh, persuade people is going to make a big difference to your employability and your potential to earn an income in the future.